Hi, Kyle Houchins here, tech and a trainer for McNeil, and I wanted to talk today about some mesh repair. Um, in the past, Rhino has not necessarily been, um, shall we say, celebrated for its mesh tools. Uh, with version 8, which is what I'm using, I'm using the, the work in progress version of version 8 um, of Rhino. Uh, there are some improvements here, and I wanted to share some of them with you and go through some basic mesh repair, uh, talk about strategies, talk about different ways that you can try and get yourself out of trouble if you have a mesh that needs to get fixed. So we can see this mesh. This is a very simple mesh, right? It's actually very well organized. It's nicely triangulated. All the faces match, all that kind of stuff. That's not necessarily the way the world works, but in this particular case, I'm going to use this as a demo just to show you what tools are available. Um, up here in the mesh drop down here, there are a bunch of repair tools. And the first one we're going to look at is just simply fill hole. Fill hole, we find an edge. You can see in version 8 we have hover highlight, so you can actually see the edges highlight as you hover over them. Pick it, just fills the hole, right? We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to come in here, right click to run the command again, pick it, and then same thing. We're going to come in here and that hole fills up nicely and that's good to go. Right now, what happens if you've got a situation like this where there's no, there's no corner, right? If I just fill hole on this, it makes a mess. That's not what I want. I don't want this chewed off corner unless I'm modeling Call of Duty scenery where I need to have holes blown and stuff, but this is this is not kind of what I'm looking for. So what I have to do is figure out how do I fill this hole and get the shapes that I want. The trick is we need to get some geometry somewhere in this corner in order to be able to to mesh to it. And one of the things that we can do is we can actually say mesh uh, edit tools and actually we don't even need to do that we can just sh we can just sub object select we're gonna pick these edges that kind of make up a corner right I'm gonna start dragging I'm gonna tap alt and I'm gonna break them off and that's gonna give me a little chunk of mesh that I can mess with now I'm gonna put it right back where I found it and the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm going to click on the gumball properties. Actually, I'm going to pick this over here and let me just move it out of the way here. For some reason, my gumball needs to be reset. Um, and let's get to the gumball options and we're going to relocate the gumball to this corner and then I'm just going to snap it right back on top of where it was. And for clarity's sake, I'm going to just change the display color on this so that you can see uh, what uh, what it looks like and we're gonna just change the display color and I'll just make it red so we can see that this is the piece that we're working with now I want to get this over here and in order to do that I'm gonna just set up a couple of little pieces of reference geometry because meshes are kind of difficult to figure out you know where the centers of stuff is and that so I'm gonna just snap a curve to this edge and that's gonna give me a center point mid snap that I can pick this thing I can mirror it from the midpoint and holding down shift I can stick that right over here in the corner where it needs to be. Now this can go away. I don't need that anymore. And now the task just becomes how do I connect these two things together and we can do that with the bridge tool and if I pick this edge here and this edge here I can, oop, I gotta follow the prompts first edge enter second edge enter brings up the tool and I can decide how many polygons I want in between here And as I roll this up or down you can see that you know that's that's how I determine that now if I was being super super picky right and this mesh was as organized as it is I can see that there's actually two polygon spans between you know this edge and over here so so to make my life easy I could bridge that using, you know, two polygon spans and know that, you know, my point counts are going to line up and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to run the command. I'm going to set this to two. And actually, I'm going to set this to 
three because I need, nope, two, right? Yeah, two. And I'm going to let that run. And you can see that that joins that in. Same thing here. I'm going to click from here to here. And I'm going to run how many in here do I need? Basically, like one, two, three, four. Well, basically three, right? One, two, three. And then that makes up the third one. So that's the first edge. That's the second edge. I'm going to run this at three say OK. And then same thing over here. I'm going to bridge from here to here. And I'm going to put in, well, it looks like seven gets us there. And let that run. Now I've got my corner back. Now I can just do fill mesh hole. And I can just click on this. And it's going to fill that in. Now, it doesn't do it with the same organized beauty that it had before, but seeing as this is a flat surface, it doesn't really matter. It, you know, it doesn't really matter what the, what the topology is. And we can click that, and we can end up with, you know, if we go to rendered mode, you can see that we end up with uh, a face. Okay? Now, you can see a little artifact on here just because the topology is different. That's really not anything to get terribly concerned about if we go back here and we weld this thing then it should and eh, the artifact is still there but it doesn't print if we go to flat shade and we look at this in shaded mode you can see that that is a flat surface that'll print fine it'll look fine all that kind of stuff right so what do we do if we have something that's a little bit more complicated than a cube? If I bring up my next object, you can see that we have a shape here that's got a little bit more going on. Now, if I run fill mesh hole on this, it, it actually will fill this in. And it does a pretty good job because the polygon count on this is fairly low. And so that's fine. We can do that, and we can just go ahead and, and run through here and do that. The, the other thing that we can do, um, the, the kind of, um, if, if this weren't so clean, like let's say we wanted to get this a little bit more organized, we could actually come in here and shift control click some of the polygons and make a more organized hole. And so in this case, I might want to actually come in here and clean this up a little bit and look at this in a couple of different pieces maybe. Um, maybe I want to get rid of that one and maybe I want to get rid of this one. And then what we can do is we can, because we're only kind of one polygon span away, we can use a tool called Patch Single Face. And this allows us to be able to kind of go in and pick a single polygon to polygon and put this you know in a kind of a very controlled manner to end up with a little bit more organized you know situation patch or uh, sorry um, bridge actually will do one polygon so bridge might be the tool that actually patches you know replaces patch single face but in this particular case it works it works fine. And so in this case, you can see that we've only got a one polygon span here. So this actually is going to work fine. And I'm going to bridge, I'm going to, you know, patch single face so that I make, you know, kind of logical little islands. And then I can use fill mesh hole. And I can just click on this and fill these in. Right. And you can see that that, because this mesh is fairly low polygon, it, it actually fills it in and does you know, pretty much what we would expect. Now, in this particular case, I don't have a corner that I can steal. I don't have, um, you know, if I were to just fill mesh hole, you're going to see that it's going to do, you know, that, which is what I don't want. And I, I kind of want to be able to follow the curvature in here, right? And so in that particular case, I need to imply or figure out, you know, kind of where the surface is going to lie on this thing. 
And in this case, what I might do is is actually switch to kind of a more NURBS mindset, and I'm going to grab an interpolate curve here. And I'm going to start kind of up here, and I'm just going to snap to the vertexes, and then I'm going to come down here and snap to these vertexes, and I'm going to get you know a fairly approximate line now is this you know 10 decimal point precision is this you know is this gonna um, you know be something that we could make optical lenses off of no but what it is gonna do is it's gonna get us out of a situation where the mesh in the you know without doing this process it it's more or less not terribly usable to get to the point where it is actually something that we can, you know, kind of work with. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just loft these two curves together and make a surface. And then I'm going to mesh that surface. And I'm going to mesh it at a fairly low polygon count. Um, if I change my maximum edge, edge length to like one and I zero this out, that will let me come down with a with a much lower poly count and I can even go to the simple controls and I can crank this like way down here and end up with something like that which is probably closer to what I want right and so I'm gonna say okay and then I'm gonna delete my surface and this ends up with a little polygon strip now it's too big and so what I need to do is I actually need to kind of get rid of this polygon and probably this one and then I can isolate this and then I'm gonna split this disjoint mesh because if I click it you see the whole thing lines up so I'm gonna split disjoint mesh and then it breaks up into three pieces I can get rid of these bring this back and now I've got a little proxy object that I can start bridging and patching to right and so I can patch single face and I can go from here to here and I can put that in and I can go from here to here and I can put that in okay so now I've got something to work with and I can even come in here at a you know at a finer level and I can actually adjust vertexes and stuff like that shift control clicking on on the vertex location get rid of my curve just like you would do you know if you were working with a sub D is to you know to mess with the vertex the faces edges and and all that kind of stuff and so now what I can do is I can start saying okay well now how am I gonna get you know from here to here and I would start to say bridge is probably what what we want to go after and so I want to go from here to here and there really is only one polygon in between them so if I bring this back I can I can go to there and I can say that that is pretty much going to do what we want and the straightness slider isn't going to do anything because it's only one polygon and we can start sticking this stuff together right and in this case you know one polygon might not you know be it it might be it might we might need to even you know look at this in a situation where we want to um, you know add a face in here manually and we can do that just like we would do with a sub D object I can just extrude a face out of here and then I can grab a vertex and I can move this from looks like it's not gonna let me move that so let's do this with gumball and we'll do this here and we're gonna just snap it to that point right and so we can actually go in and put this exactly how we want it and with some very fine detail you know decide exactly how we want this transition to work take a look at it from a couple of different views and then we can use patch single face 
and I'm, I'm belaboring a lot of this intentionally, you know, if you, once you get into this process a little bit, you can see that it doesn't, you know, you can start to use a little bit, you know, more automated and a little bit smarter versions of all of this kind of stuff. But the, the key is to understand the tools that are there and understand that just because there's stuff missing, it doesn't mean that you're you know, out of luck. It just means that you need to, you know, add a little bit more detail. And so let's, let's go with bridge again. And let's go from here to here. And we're going to bridge that. I always do that wrong. Pick, enter, pick, enter. There we go. And I'm going to add two. And then the straightness slider, I can use this to adjust kind of like that and if the edge isn't what we want we can always shift control click it and then we can just move it around and we can get it close and then we can always go back and we can stitch or weld two points together we can stitch that like that and then we can do the same thing again down here we can even probably bridge both of these bridge let's go from here to here and we we'll use the straightness slider to just get it close and then we can pick this edge and I have to give a shout out to our developers who have taken the sub modeling capabilities and added it into the mesh functionality which has made a lot of these workflows possible in V8 where they weren't necessarily possible in V7. Alright, so we can fill mesh hole here and we've got you know a pretty good a pretty good patch there for something that was pretty busted. So let's try, let's do these guys again, let's do bridge through here and I'm going to bridge it to these three. Sometimes doing this in wireframe is easier because it doesn't um, it's easier to pick. So let's move this out a little bit like that. Say OK and then let's pick double click to pick that whole edge and we're going to use the seaplane waffle here to just get it pretty close. and then let's shift control click shift control click and we'll just stitch and if you just accept the defaults when I did that stitch let me redo that and I'll show you a little trick in stitch um, if you click the vertexes right and I just run stitch see that little line between them if you look in the command line it says stitch location average if I just hit enter it's gonna drop it in the center but if I don't hit enter and I come down here, I can actually choose where along, you know, this is the first vertex, this is the second vertex. I can choose anywhere along this path. If I just hit enter, it's going to drop it in the center here. But if I wanted it here, I wanted it here, or I wanted it here, I would come down here and I would slide it. And then I just give a right, a left click and it accepts it. All right. And then this one down here is, is small enough. I can just use fill my shawl. Now, I've filled in all of this stuff. The last thing I want to do is check it and see if it's open. And in this case, it doesn't have any problems that we can see here. And the most important part of it is that it is a closed polygon mesh. Now, you will see a couple of dark edges on here. That, that's, those are edges that are not welded. If I wanted to weld them, I could. And in this case, if I just weld to 30 degrees it gets most of them looks like there's a couple more down in here that are a little higher so let's weld those at let's say 45 and we're gonna run that you can see that all of the unwelded edges are now welded and then if we needed to do something with this we could either shrink wrap it we could quad remesh it we could you know once we quad remesh it we could turn it to sub D once we have it in sub D we could turn it to NURBS and so this opens up a whole um, path for 
reverse engineering, if you've got a scan that's got a messy hole in it, um, you know, build a NURB surface, mesh that NURB surface, and then hack away the polygons at the edge to build a gap, and then use bridge or patch single face to build little bridges from the, you know, busted mesh to the new part that you made. And then, you know, bridge, patch single face, fill mesh hole, all that kind of stuff you can use to kind of put it back together. And you end up with something that is, you know, not only usable, but it's, it's something that, you know, you could throw through a printer and have this, have this be fine. And, you know, when you're post-processing the part, you're going to sand it a little bit. So any imperfections or anything like that in there really is kind of of less circumstance than it would be. Now, if we're doing super high precision work and this thing, you could see if we were to, you know, subdivide this thing uh, several times and this is the level of mesh that we're working with and these are the level of holes that we were working with you know if we hacked a hole through this thing and we were tasked with trying to fix this right it's the same process we just need to build something out here that we can then start patching bridging you know filling all that kind of stuff it's just more tedious and it's more you know detail-y than it would have been when we were looking at a mesh that is not quite as complex. Now, the one thing that you can do, let's say we've got a mesh that is that complex, right? And we've got something that we need to, we need to deal with it. Let's say that there's a hole in here that's like this. Shrink wrap will actually go ahead and, and you know, fill this hole, but it might not necessarily do what you want. The, the thing that you might want to look at is quad remesh and you can quad remesh this you know to a target count of something let's say 750 let's just take a look at it and see what it looks like and that may give you a more organized um, you know starting point that you can work with and put you in a position where you don't have to do quite as much work as you had before and if we hide the input objects we can see what the result is and we can see that it's, you know, it's a little bit messy, but I don't really care because I can always go in and just, you know, clean this stuff up or, you know, build my little proxy piece or I can build some, you know, interpolate point curves, you know, three or four of them over here loft most of this surface back, right? Make this big piece out of NURBS, even if it overlaps. When I mesh it, I can always hack the edges off and leave a gap. That's, that's the main thing is you just need to build a piece, you know, get it in proximity so that it looks like it's going to do what it needs to do, and then, uh, you know, hack the edges off in order to, to allow a gap between, you know, the piece that you built and the new piece, and then you can patch bridge all that kind of stuff and get it back together. Now, this might not be enough quads. Let's bump this up to 1,200 and see what it does. And it may it may give us a better result. I'm not editing any of this for time. This is actually just running real time. And so a little bit higher polygon count gave us a little bit better result. And, you know, maybe we get it, maybe we do things like, you know, get rid of detect hard edges and let that run. We could also add some influence curves here if we wanted to affect the topology, so we wanted it to flow in a specific way, and that actually is starting to look pretty good. There's a little bit of mess down here that I might need to clean up that I might even be able to get away with if I get a little bit higher point count in here, or poly quad count, sorry. And so for folks who are dealing with scans, where the you know the meshes come in and they're just disastrously large um, this you know this might be a, a good way to get you back and you can see that the the structure of this is set up really really well and even if this stuff on the edges is trash it's not a big deal we just get rid of it you know just control shift drag and and get rid of it and what's left is you know this kind of nicely organized uh, you know stuff that would be not terrible to work with and the nice thing about it is look at this isoparametric flow look at the look at the topology flow you can imagine just snapping an interpolate curve right down this line and 
you know, have that little bridge piece made fairly easily, right? Because this is all makes sense. It's all fairly organized, which is one of the nice things about quad remesh. Once you get that thing repaired, you can say two sub D, make it a sub D. Um, you can do two NURBS and then make that a NURBS object and then, you know, you're off to the races, whatever you want to do from there. But um, so anyway, that's kind of what I wanted to show you today. That's that's a, a little, just a little quickie, quick hit tutorial there so that you can get some ideas about some of the capabilities that are uh, new in V8. The, the other thing is you could, um, things like, mesh split work now <laughs> it didn't before <laughs> these things now work mesh split mesh trim things like that um, mesh booleans by the way have been completely rewritten and many thanks to our mesh boolean developer um, Julio, who has done wonders with these, um, these all work now. So if you wanted to split it, trim it, boolean it, do things like that, um, those workflows have now been opened uh, pretty reliably in version eight. And if you try this and you find stuff that's broken, please let us know because we are actively developing this as we speak. And any time that we can find stuff that's busted gives us an opportunity to fix it so that it doesn't stay busted. So. That's it. That's all I have for you today. Um, hope you enjoyed. Hope you are enjoying version 8 as it develops. Uh, as always, please hit the forum, which is discourse.mcneil.com, and make sure that you're posting any issues that you find. And um, that's it. Hope you have a great day. My name is Kyle Houchins, tech and a trainer for McNeil. Go make great stuff. Thanks. Bye.